1946, the son of a grocer and jukebox operator named Cosmo Matassa opened a recording studio in the back of his record shop on Rampart Street down in New Orleans. This decision would change everything, and the groundbreaking music he recorded there will live on forever. In 1956, he moved his operation a few blocks away, and it was there in a cork-lined former avocado warehouse where the great big fat bottom sound of New Orleans rock and roll and rhythm and blues was born. Cosmo's expertise and ear for a hit record would soon make the studio the destination of choice for independent labels in search of that sound. By 1960, he had developed a numbering system for the 45s he mastered there a number which any one of you who has ever bought a New Orleans 45 might recognize. This cryptic, hyphenated set of two numbers represented the unique matrix number for that particular side and had puzzled record collectors for years as to its possible significance. It was a Scotsman named Davy Gordon who had cracked this code of Cosmos some 40 years later. The first number, he said, referred to that particular label or client and stayed pretty much the same for all releases on that label. The second one, however, was sequential and followed a set pattern from one label to the next. This breakthrough meant that it would now be possible to compile an accurate chronology of all the records that Cosmo had stamped with these numbers. Gordon told his friend John Ridley, who in turn alerted John Groven and Peter Gibbon. In 1964, while continuing his numbering system, Cosmo branched out and started up his own label and publishing company, White Cliffs. Expanding even further in 1965, he would create his own distribution network through a new company he named Dover Records, which began handling the distribution of the numbered 45s on all the various labels as well. In May of 1966, the unparalleled success of Robert Parker's Barefootin' stressed the resources of Dover and left Cosmo struggling to keep up with demand. As 66 gave way to 67, an even bigger hit, Aaron Neville's Tell It Like It Is pushed Dover to the limit and left Cosmo holding the bag as out-of-town distributors refused to pay up, leaving him unable to pay his own bills. Although it remained business as usual for a while, by mid-1968 Dover Records collapsed, taking all of those small labels along with it and putting the big chill on the big easy recording scene for years to come. In 1969, Cosmo set up a smaller studio named Jazz City in the former Dover Records offices. Although the numbered 45s would continue to be issued, they would become few and far between. Meanwhile, over the course of the past few years, the hunt has been on for these Cosmo-coded 45s through some of the most extensive record collections in the world. The boys from the UK began compiling a list on an Excel spreadsheet, and before long there were over a thousand entries. They have now decided to open it up to the public and thought Soul Detective would be the perfect place. And so we spent the last several months developing this interactive website which lists by year every known 45 bearing the Cosmo code. 45 Cat has proved an invaluable resource and we have been adding our own scans to the database as well. The dates given are approximate and where possible are taken from Billboard and Cashbox. Other sites like the legendary Home of the Groove, The Singing Bones, and of course our own Sir Shambling's Deep Soul Heaven have all added immensely to our own research here at Soul Detective as we have tried to provide as comprehensive an overview as possible. The left column provides any label details we have for each record and includes a link to a scan and further information if it is available. You will notice there are gaps in the numbers and while some of these may be explained by the major labels practice of dispensing with Cosmos matrix numbers and providing their own, we feel there are many more 45s to be found. In addition to our own hosted MP3s, great YouTube contributors like the Ninth Ward Jukebox have enabled us to provide audio for over 550 sides at last count. Affording the opportunity to listen to these recordings sequentially in chronological order the way they were produced. How cool is that? What started out as a simple email link has evolved into a forum where we can share information in the time-honored soul detective tradition. And so, the Cosmo Code is not only a tribute to the great musicians of New Orleans, it is also a tribute to the man himself, Cosmo Matassa, who in a sense developed the sound of rock and roll through his great engineering abilities. The Cosmo Code is a tribute to him and very well deserved.
And as far as accomplishment, I guess, you know, just a massive work over a lot of years. And I have to say, a lot of good musicians made me look good. <laughs>